Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. I'm delighted to bring on Mickey Hazard to the channel. Uh, we will be previewing this coming season. Of course, we start the season this Sunday at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium against the champions, Manchester City. Mickey, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm, I'm here at, uh, at Jimmy, Jimmy Greaves' night. Jimmy was present for the vast majority of the night. It was an incredible experience. Um, probably one of the best experiences of my life in terms of doing events and, and functions with former players. To do it with the greatest of all, Jimmy, um, and I thought his dignity and pride was on show for all to see. It was amazing. Evening. Dinner with Jimmy Greaves. Don't get any better than that, does it? Not for me. I mean, I hope everybody who was here tonight leaves um, with the way I feel. Um, because to be sitting in the presence of true greatness, um, to be sitting in the presence of Spurs' uh, greatest ever goal scorer um, and possibly the biggest ever legend, um, and maybe his goal scoring record will never ever be beaten, to be sitting there next to him as well and to hear him talk about football, even if it was only very briefly, it was just an incredible experience, one that I'll treasure forever. Hey Mickey, Tottenham go into the Premier League season this Sunday against Manchester City. Lots of changes this summer, three new signings, Nuno Espirito Santo is a new boss. How are you feeling about this season coming? Um, well, obviously before we made the signings that we've made, uh, and with the speculation surrounding Ari, I was apprehensive. Um, I think that we've made a couple of good signings. The goalie looked excellent, I must say, when he played. Uh, and obviously the centre-back, when I've seen him play, looks, look, looks absolutely tremendous. Um, so good signings, positive signs. All we need now is that the teams look decent. We did a great result against Arsenal. Um, good, good comeback against Chelsea. Um, so I, I think that um, things are looking more positive now than at the start of the summer. Um, and if we can persuade Harry to stay, then we're, we're really starting to look like a team again. So yes, there's, there's positive signs. We're not there yet. We're not finished our goal. It'll take time. One or two more signings still required, um, but I'm I'm feeling a lot better than I was six weeks ago. For you, does Harry Kane start this game on Sunday? For Spurs, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Spurs player. Why wouldn't he? If he's in our best eleven, which he is, then he should start until uh, a decision is made. Harry Kane's a top player, football player, and Harry Kane should play for top Hotspur until he's either sold. Or is injured. But for me, he starts the game full stop. Mickey, for you, will Harry Kane be a Tottenham Hotspur player come the 1st of September when the transfer window ends? I think so. I really do. I, and I've said from day one, so I'm not just saying it now because nothing's happened with City. Um, the bottom line is, is that City have had their chance to, to buy him. Um, they've offered 100 million. Um, it's nowhere near enough in my opinion and, and Spurs are at liberty to demand the fee that they feel is his value. Um, so I agree with the club on that basis. I think it's wrong for Manchester City to, to be talking about Harry Kane because he's not their player. Uh, fine, they've put in an offer but that's it, end of. It hasn't been accepted so until they put in another offer and it's debated, they shouldn't even be discussing Harry Kane. Um, but Harry Kane is at this moment in time a Tottenham Hotspur football player and um, Harry's a top, top, top player but he's also a top, top, top pro and I'm certain that Harry, if he's in training, when he gets back in training, he will give everything for the club, simple as that. He loves the club, number one, but number two, he's a professional uh, and professionals don't um, renege on what is part of the deal when they sign a contract with a new club. Uh, if he leaves, then he gives his all to a new club. But while he's here, and until he leaves, or injured, then he has to give his all, and he will, because he's a top, top, top pro and a top, top human being. Mickey, two years ago we were in a Champions League final. Of course, last season we played in the Europa League. This season we're about to enter the Europa Conference League. What do Tottenham Hotspur need to do in this transfer window to try and get back into the top four and play Champions League football again? I think, first of all, I think as, as a group of fans we need to lower ex our expectations a little. I think that the Champions League final was amazing, it was an amazing run and, um, and while somewhat fortunate run, you know, Manchester City, the, the offside goal, the, the three goals in ten minutes at, at Ajax, it was somewhat fortunate but still an incredible achievement. And while 
Unfortunately, there was a lot of um, friction at the start of the following season. Our form leading into the Champions League final wasn't great either. Um, so it, it sort of carried over into the start of the following season. And I think that um, it sort of hindered and slowed us down. And then obviously um, we got rid of uh, Pochettino and we brought in a manager while one of the best ever managers, he wasn't synonymous with the philosophies and style of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club and as a consequence, um, for me it's the responsibility of any manager to come in and, and to not take away the philosophies and history of a great football club but to add to them and, and, and style and philosophies being the key, you know, if we've got a, a way of playing that's been synonymous with our club, then it's up to him to adopt it, but to add his um, philosophies to it, rather than take away ours, to add his. He's, he's just a, 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 few year, a few year manager. You know, one day he won't be here, and this club has to survive without, not just him, any manager. But for me, it's, it's, it's the key to success, is to adopt the philosophies of the football club, the history of the football club, and add your own tactical things to the team, not totally change the style. And if Mourinho made a mistake, that was his mistake, That in that he came in, he totally went against everything that this club has preached throughout the years, uh, and as a consequence we became boring, boring arse, oh, sorry, uh, boring, boring Tottenham. Um, and it wasn't very nice to watch. And I think in many ways he was saved by the fans. I don't think the fans, if they were in the stadium, would have allowed that style of play to happen. Our fans have been brought up on a creative, creative flair, uh, intelligent attacking football, um, where our team goes out and we try to win. We don't try not to lose. Um, and that's the key at Tottenham. We like to try to win, even if you go through a history of even our worst teams. They all tried to win. They all went out onto the pitch and tried to win. And, and it was something that... Um, under Mourinho we went out to try not to lose and maybe nick a win that's not our way uh, and it never worked and it never will at this football club so um, I hope that this season brings us one, our identity back you know Mr Levy has spoken about us as a club getting our identity back our identity is to play football with grace, with style, with elegance, with flair, to dare is to do. We go out onto the park trying to win. Um, and if we lose, then we'll, as a, as, a, as a fan base, we will walk tall with our heads high and our chests out because we went out there and we tried to win the game. I don't want to watch a team that doesn't try to win. Football's about winning. Uh, the, uh, the game's about glory. The game is glory. Um, and we're Tottenham Hotspur and. and, and Sometimes, as the great Bill Nick once said, is that if you attempt to win games the right way, even in defeat, brings with it an echo of glory. And that's my philosophy, is if I try to win, uh, and I give everything I've got to win, then if I do lose, then go, an echo of glory will ring in my heart and my mind, because I've given everything to win, and that's our philosophies. Let's let's live by them. Let's go out and play. It was noticeable when Ryan took over, for instance. The fans were so happy because we were trying to win. Okay, we didn't turn it into wins because confidence was was not very high. But but at least we were in the first game, for instance, we saw that and we turned it into a win because we went for the win. Um, and that's all I want to see from my team. Let's go for it. Have a go. Sure, though, Mickey. Um, the 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 key and the. Uh... You know, we've got to get in that top four space again, haven't we? And the trophies, you know, we speak about trophies so often as a club. You know, lack of trophies, 13 long years without a trophy. Surely the aim and the key this season is perhaps finishing back in the top four and deliver a trophy. Um, I think that's the aim of every season, to deliver a trophy. Certainly when you start the, the season, you've got to start with the highest ambitions you possibly can. And even if they're unrealistic... You know, you've got to aim high. As, as is it unrealistic? No, no, it's not unrealistic for us to win a trophy. But let's aim high. Let's aim for the, to win the Premier League title. Let's aim to win the FA Cup. Let's aim to get back in the Champions League. Let's aim for everything. You know, when you start the season, you all start start off on an equal footing. Nobody knows who's going to be the best team yet. Um, everybody thinks Manchester City or Liverpool or Chelsea or whoever, but nobody knows yet. And and if you go out there with, in the right. Um, 
style, the right attitude, the right desire to be successful, you stand a much better chance than if you say, okay, let's aim for 15th. You know, what a load of crap. Let's aim for number one. Um, and if we get number three, then okay, we've got Champions League football, but let's aim for the highest spot. That's, um, the minute you aim for the highest spot, it means you, 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 you're putting pressure on yourself to, to achieve. You know, and the mental ability to cope with aiming for the highest spot, that's what turns you from being a sort of also ran into a winner. And, you know, and that's what we need to develop, an attitude that's not content to finish second, third, fourth or fifth. We have to develop an attitude that says, I'm a winner, I want to win things. And, and um, second, who wants to talk about second? I can't even remember who finished second last year. So, um, who finished second last year, Chris? Man United. Did they? Well, that shows how shit the league was then. <laughs> um, but as I said, you know, winning is, is, is a mentality. And it, the more you win, the more it breeds a belief that you're going to win. But the first starting point is believing from the start, before the first ball's been kicked, that you're going to win. Mickey, are you feeling confident for this Sunday? Can we get the three points? Will we get the three points? Well, I saw Manchester City against Leicester. I thought they were very, very poor. Um, I saw us at times look very good against Chelsea and at times look very good against Arsenal. I don't think we were anywhere near the finished article in both games, but we certainly looked capable of creating chances and scoring goals. Um, and certainly, um, I think if we get our best team on the pitch, we're going to be more solid defensively. So the signs are looking good. Are they good enough to say, yes, we're going to challenge at the very top? I won't know that until I've seen them two or three games against in a real game. In friendly games, sometimes false false performances and false results happen. Um, it didn't matter on Sunday because we beat the scum. So, hey. Mickey, what's your score prediction? Two one Spurs. It's so nice to see you again. It's so nice to talk to you again. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time, and unfortunately, um, we've lived a life that has been so restrictive and so. Um, painful to live through. Um, I hope that we're coming out the other side, and I hope that we're coming out the other side with um, a better outlook on life. You know, we've had our freedoms taken away from us, and we've got a chance to get our freedoms back. And, and what you learn about yourself in in dark times is: are you big enough to rise above it? Are you big enough to show? kindness and love and caring for other people during the dark times because anybody can be kind and caring and loving when things are going really well but it's when you yourself are feeling dark times when the situation's dire that you've got to look deep within yourself and rise above the, the, the chaos that surrounds you and I'd like to think that um, certainly I think I've did that and um, I've stayed positive I've stayed um, hopeful, uh, that's the key, but I've stayed kind, I've stayed caring, I've stayed giving, I've stayed loving. Um, and here we are tonight, you know, sorry to talk one about it, but we're here with a group of fans who've come here to support Jimmy Greaves. They've come here to support Jimmy Greaves because he needs help with his ongoing care, right? Now that's what we're talking about, you know, the, if, if one thing coronavirus has did is it's hopefully taught us lessons that don't take nothing for granted, Life is wonderful, but it's better when you're kind and you're caring, you're giving and you're loving. And people like Jimmy tonight who are suffering, we can give them things that can help them along the way and give them a better life. It's, it's not just ex-footballers and it's not just ex-Spurs players that we can help. There's many people out there that need help. Um, and particularly with the coronavirus saga, there's, there's a lot more mental health problems going around than ever before. Um, I can't imagine um, of children who've lost parents, who weren't allowed to go and visit them on the day in hospital as they lay dying. I can't imagine the mental health problems that they're going to be left with as a consequence of that. I think it was the most inhumane thing that I've ever seen or witnessed. Um, I think that government should be held responsible for that because I don't think it's their decisions to make. Their, their decision is to run the country. It should be the parents' decision whether they want their child to come and visit them on their dying bed so they can say bye-bye to their loved ones 
um, and I can't ever forgive the government for introducing such draconian laws that stop children seeing their parents as they lay dying. Um, that doesn't wash with me. You picked an, uh, uh, you, you, you are um, voted in to run our country, not to run our lives. Um, and while, of course, this was something unforeseen and never happened in our lifetimes, um, it was so inhumane to allow people to die alone and without the love and care of their family by their side. Um, and it's the person who died obviously would die alone, but the ones left behind will carry that mental scar for the rest of their lives that they allowed their parent to die alone, never went and consoled them, never went and um, cuddled them, told them how much they loved them. And for that, I just have no time for, for, for this government or any government that introduced that law. It's been very difficult, Mickey. Um... The fans are, of course, back in the stadium on Sunday. That's going to, that's going to give the uh, the team a huge lift, isn't it? Yeah, no, listen, I, I can't imagine how difficult last year was for players playing in empty stadiums. You know, uh, as someone who used to love it when the fans sang my name or, or if I did a magic, magic skill or a magic pass and the fans got cheered so loud, it was give you such a lift. So it must have been incredibly difficult. And a lot of the time, half the games felt like they were just training games. Um, and pretty boring and dull to watch. So now that the fans back in, it must have given the players, well, most of the players, a big lift. Some players will prefer not to have the fans there because maybe they find it difficult playing in front of fans. I was one who, uh, I loved fans being there. I didn't like playing in front of too many. In the I loved playing in front of 100,000 because I wanted to show them how good I was. Whether I was bad or good, uh, it didn't matter because there was 100,000 fans there. Uh, and the excitement and in the build-up when you, before you went out onto the pitch was, I'm going to show these how great I am. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that because I want the fans to see my name. Didn't always work out like that, but it's the feeling that you get before games uh, and during games that so uplifts you. Um, so th now on Sunday we'll see with the fans back in the stadium and the atmosphere being electric because. This is a release valve now. These fans are coming back to something that they love and worship. Uh, and, and we're going to hear lots and lots of very, very good things. But we're also going also to hear, it's not all good. You know, sometimes you get booed, sometimes you, you get called. And, but that's part of the process. Part of the process is when it's character booing, you have to play through someone booing you. Um, because the secret to, if you're being booed, the secret is, can you turn the boos into cheers? Not, oh, it's not fair, they're booing me. No, you have to try and turn the booze into cheers. That's the secret. That's how you, you, you go about it. That's how you face up to it. Uh, be a man and say, right, I'll turn that boo into a cheer. You know, don't, don't whittle and die. Uh, turn it into a cheer. Because the cheer then means so much more to you. You know, because without the boo, the cheer is just, you know, if I keep telling you, oh, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great, then in the end, the, 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 the compliment means nothing. But if I tell you, oh, you're shit, oh, but today you're great, then the company means so much more. Um, so take the booze as a way of motivating you to turn it into a cheer, and then the cheer will mean so much more. Mickey, I absolutely love talking to you, and we've agreed tonight that you're going to come back on the channel I am. Uh, for a long video to talk about your career. So if anyone's got any questions for Mickey, please do put them in the comments section below, and uh, Mickey will be on in the next week or two. Whenever you want, I'm yeah. available. Mickey, thanks so much, and come on you Spurs. Pleasure, Chris. Come on you Spurs. Mwah.